Next hit is locked in and it starts right now. Patrick Merz in front had very great. He claimed that he was surprised by that, but honestly, I believe he's just. Let's see what happens now. We're going into the loose section. Andrew Swanson coming hard on him. Uh, but there's, there's Mr. Otis from Czech Republic. Oh, Patrick Merz crashed. And Andrew Swanson and. Oh, there. Good day, guys. Hey, going Aussie Crasher here. It is the end of the season. I'm back in Australia and I thought it'd be a good chance and opportunity to run through some of my races and give you a bit of an inside perspective of, uh, I guess, what was going through my head during the races, uh, leading into the races and after the racing happened. Um, a bit of an inside look into what actually happens in those minute or so you're on the track and, uh, I guess, uh, to help give an opportunity for other races to come into the sport and have an idea of what they should be focusing on and what they shouldn't be focusing on. Uh, I'm not the best rider out there, so uh, everything I say could be right, could be wrong, um, but this is just how I approach it. So uh, we'll get into it, I guess. First things first is the uh, first race in uh, Winterlight in Austria. Um, we'll start up in the, uh, the LCQ here. So unfortunately, we only have footage of the end of the LCQ. Uh, you can't really see a lot of it because I was having some camera problems during the race, but I can show you at least how it finished. Um, I was actually a little bit stressed leading into this one because LCQs is my chance to lose it. Uh, so it's always a stressful time. Probably the most stressful racing of the weekend if you ever end up in an LCQ. But that's because I had one one incident in, in Italy which really like stuck with me and has always made it the most stressful, stressful time for me to, to be racing. Once you're through the LCQ, it's, it's, all, it's all fun and games, but the LCQ is, yeah, not my favorite time. The end of the, the race here, miles in front. Unfortunately, the guy in second ended up taking a bit of a dive over the, uh, the roller and uh, ended up coming down, but uh, he was all good in the end. So I know the hardest thing about the LCQ and just racing in general is your first run is cold. There's no, there's no warm-up equipment. You can warm up your best you can. Like I use skipping ropes, go for a bit of a run, some stretches. Uh, but yeah, that first run, you're going from zero to 100, uh, mostly cold, especially because if you've been standing around outside in, in minus temperatures for some time, uh, yeah, it can get, it can get painful. But I just know in this first one, I was happy with how the race went. I stuck to my plan, got out of the gate as fast as I could and just tucked it down that, that main section. Ended up in first by quite some time. And then, yeah, I know just coming around the corner here, I was happy with my turn and just not on the right balance point coming up like that last little run up. So uh, obviously see me take a little bit of a stumble forward, but outside of that, happy to take the dub in LCQ that put me through to the finals. So can't complain there at all. So now we have the Round of 32. So, round of 32, walked back up to the top. Uh, feeling a bit warmer now, a bit happier. The track's feeling good. You've had your first run under your feet. This is when it starts getting fast. So, up in this one, I'm against Swanee from America, Mertz from Switzerland, and Oods from Czech Republic. Last gate pick for me. I was happy with my line. Uh, I'm quite comfortable in that fire outside gate. It gives me a real nice line to the, uh, the first section here, which I'll, I'll explain as to how it actually helped me in this race. But uh, we'll start it here. So five second warning, best time of the race. It's where all your stress peaks and everything goes quiet. And it's just, there's one thing you have to do 100% for the next, next 45 hit. seconds. So out and of the gate, right now. already Perfect here, you map. can see I kind of took a bit of a stumble. Just that transition there, not really comfortable with my balance uh, at that point. And uh, yeah, you can see I kind of on my back heel a little bit and stopped to regain a bit of balance for getting some strides in. That put me behind the guys, but again, I knew I'd be behind them uh, from the, the furthest on the, the uh, screen right there. So I knew I had work to do, but I already had a game plan for that. So we'll see that in action here. Just pump the hell out of that roller. You just got to get the speed because this next section is the most important section on this track. Um, just take that, that line as best you can. Just clip that inside apex, this right hand corner here. And uh, yeah, then set up for the section where you make up all your speed. So come here, I just pumped the absolute hell out of this. I put all my weight into those pumps because I know this is where I'm gathering speed. Don't have a lot of opportunity to be striding here. So anytime there's a roll, you can get some momentum on, you've got to take the most of it. So I pumped the hell out of that, scrub the tabletop here, just get on, get a quick stride. And then this is where it all comes down to knowing how to draft and, and how to keep those skates straight. So now this section would come up after the tabletop. Um, it's probably the most important part. This is just the glide section. So you, there's a lot of things you can do right. So there's a lot of things you can do wrong. Uh, at this point in my head, I knew my game plan. It was get behind them, tuck like all hell and draft them down, have them pull me along. 
So we get in here. I'm already on the back of Oogs. Now my game plan here was try and draft down and find an overtaking point. Uh, and that's where it got a bit sketchy. So we're down here. You actually can't see me in this footage. I am tucked in behind Swanee there. I just have Swanee's ass right in front of me, Oogs ass right next to me, and I can't see anything. I'm tucked in so far behind. I actually can't see the track. So I'm using them as a guide of, of where I am on the track and, and at what point we should be breaking. Andrew Swanson coming hard on him. So at this point, as we come into the right hand corner before the roll up, uh, they all split out. So they split three wide and I was kind of a bit unfortunate that took away my passing opportunity. It's not a wide section of the track there and you're lucky enough to fit two guys wide, let alone three guys wide coming into this, uh, this roller section. My thought at this point on the track was they're three wide coming in here. It's going to be sketchy. So yeah, I, I hit the brakes, um, put a bit of distance between me and them. Uh, just so if there is someone that goes down, I could actually react and, and take off like a advantage of that. So you see, I'm a bit further oh, behind, but, um, but I'm seeing that they're tangling and Oods and Mertz uh, uh, arm in arm. So I'm like, this is my chance. I got, I got a second coming if they both go down. I was in my head, get this roller here done nicely, get it low, get the right line for this end section and skate like hell. So you see, unfortunately, There's well, Mr. fortunately, Oles I guess for the um, Oods themselves, oh, uh, only Mertz kind of took a bit of his tumble. So it would put me in third at least, but would have been nice to have the second thinking back at it now at this point i would have liked to have been closer because there is a play you can make on this corner like as swanny's doing here you can cut on the inside and uh slow them up and then try and sprint to the finish line or you can actually also go far wide and take a lot of speed around that like uh, that corner hit the brakes uh I, I can tell you where i messed up on that one uh coming around that corner coming around i just i should have kept more speed i just tried to cut it too tight in and ended up um yeah just cutting too much ice and just lost too much speed but uh i was happy with my sprint up oh, i was closer to the guys than i was at prior to that corner so i did make some speed up there but if i didn't make those few mistakes at the end so if i didn't break so hard at the um the rollers there uh if i didn't carve so much into that final hairpin uh second place was was looking good and the slide across the line i wasn't sure because i saw mertz uh didn't actually go down go down he just kind of bounced off the wall so i wasn't sure if mertz was behind me or if i had a chance against swanee so it's always worth taking the slide because you can always gain an extra couple feet um over not and i have seen races lost by millimeters of escape blade so if in doubt slide it out so that's how i got through my first race of the 2023 season um i'm going to be doing as many as i can for these series for the 2023 season because I think it's good to give uh, newcomers and um, people that don't actually race the sport a bit of an insight into what yourself as an athlete goes through on the track because it looks hectic and, and crazy from the out, like an external point of view. And sometimes it is that hectic and crazy and internally, but sometimes a uh, crazy looking race can be mellow as hell. So I think it's nice to give a bit of an insight into what goes through the mind of an athlete on one of these tracks. Please uh, like, subscribe, and I will... See you for the next one. Riders ready. Five second warning. Beep.